Okay. So, drop in. Back to your body. That little island of you in the chair. You and your beautiful heart. You and your beautiful soul. And your beautiful soul family. And the connection that you've experienced this weekend, today, this last hour. And the love that you are. And what it is that you each bring to the party. What it is that you each bring to this beautiful space and time and place. How we together change the vibration. Tune into the vibration and become the vibration of love for each other and for all those whose lives are touched, which is everyone from here. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Kryon of Magnetic Service. And my partner steps aside. Last week in a very similar group, old souls that you pretend not to know, I gave a message. I want to give a similar one this time. This time I've instructed my partner to record it so that others might share it. And the first thing I will say is what I said to them. What is your perception of what is happening? A man is in a chair. Is he pretending? And how would you know if he was or was not? And there is only one answer to that, and that is to say, you would have to use something other than the synapse of your brain, which can only tell you what it remembers based upon the past. That information may tell you he's faking. For your brain is one that is of survival, and it will say, beware of those who will trick you. And so your first reaction would be that it's not real. And that is a survival reaction. And if that's the case, dear ones, why are you here? Is this real? The process of channeling is mysterious to most. But to an old soul who has sat in meditation and received messages seen healings, watched the things that are outside of the reality of the rest of you, there is something else that is real to them. For old souls know there is something more. Is this real? Your body is built to discern these things which are esoteric. Inside your DNA is an entire system of validation that is absolutely correct and pure. If you believe that you are a creature of God, if you believe what the masters have told you, and that there is a connection to God in you. Use the connection. Healers, right before you heal, what goes on? You see, I know this is a rhetorical question. There is a guidance system, is there not, as you sit in front of another human? It helps you to know what to do, what to touch, where the issues are. A kind of a healer that I am speaking of is one who would be intuitive and perhaps use energy processes and not just chemistry 
and would have to back up and see an entire picture, one human to another, and intuit medically what is going on. Intuit psychologically what is going on. And what do you call that? And where did it come from? Is this real? And there is no answer that I can give you which contains within it the proof of the situation. All I can do is implore you to use this which is God given a system that old souls should all know about that brings you to listen to this channeling or to be in the room to experience it. And at some level to know it's real. Has Cryon ever given you information that would diminish your magnificence? Has Cryon ever given you information that would put you in an uncomfortable place Or to ask you to do something that was not in your integrity to do. In 23 years. Have I ever come before you angry. Or judgmental. Or in any other situation than in the love that is pure of God. The answer is no. I represent that which is the connection to the higher self and it is available in every single human being on the planet in an equal way but the old soul has practiced this so many times and so many ways that you are the ones who have the best tools in this new energy to pull it off to find that connection to open it fully And when it opens, a whole new set of tools is there. Not just discernment, but new concepts of living. New concepts that will, will create solutions, if not to situations, at least to how you think about them. There are those in this room who have had tragedy in their lives beyond description. And I know who sits here. And these are not the things that you would necessarily bring up and speak about because it's tough for you. And it's not just that, perhaps, of losing a loved one. Situations that are untenable to the mind. I know who sits here. You don't want to talk about them because they're embarrassing or you're guilty for whatever reason. Your mind is working overtime, all the time, to try to justify it, why it happened to you. And yet, you have been able to take that and file it where it goes and rewrite the data around it so that it does not consume your life any longer. A situation so horrible that most of the humans in the room would not want to hear of it. And yet you sit there in peace in a room with those of like mind and you put it where it belongs. You've rewritten your reaction to the past and in the process dear ones you have changed the past let me tell you what happens next because you're not aware of the whole system and this is exciting if you have changed your reaction to the past let me ask you what do you think around you has also seen you do it and is also rewriting the past and that is 
those energies you call family, the crystalline grid, the Gaia grid, the whole esoteric system reacts to the old soul's actions. Do you understand what I'm saying? You think it's self-help? That's foolish. You're not helping yourself. You're helping the planet. And what happens when a group of you do it? It's profound. Let me give you something to think about. You just did an exercise. For some of you it was fun. Others interesting. It didn't last long. And the ones hearing this channeling don't even know what you did. But you know, it was an exercise of the energy that I'm speaking of right now, intuition. Something that is elusive, you cannot grasp totally. So you are practicing it to exercise that muscle of possibility that you could look beyond the synapse of your brain into the other system which would give you information about yourself, perhaps others in your circle, and you might be able to give them meaningful messages. And some of you did. Not only that, there were some metaphors of spirit given to you to look at, to look up, to prove it was real. Now in the process of the exercise, what else might have happened that you're not aware of? And I ask you this, what else, who else is aware of you, old soul? Is it possible that the entire grid system that sits in this place saw what you did? And if that's the case and you know about what the grid system is and we've talked about, a benevolent system that mirrors your intent what do you think just happened because old souls opened the door? A possibility. It saw it. What you just did in less than an hour changes the attribute a little bit of what the earth thinks you're up to. And right now, floating right here, is a layer of intent to know more about the Creator. To know more about a system that connects you with God. And you'll leave this place, and I want to tell you, the very fabric of the room will ring with the intent when you're gone. How does that feel to you? That's the energy of the old soul. Is this real? Have you felt it yet? A comforting blanket, arms around you, hands in your hands, those you've loved and lost, those you have yet to meet, perhaps even those in this room who are closer than you think. Pieces and parts of souls you cannot understand in your linear mind all gathering together to say it is well with your soul. And to remind you that there is a veil between you and God purposely put there by you so you'll ask these questions. A system exists of benevolence and support. And the more you push on the questions, the more the other side We'll give you the answers. This is the system. It's not like the system you're used to in the linearity of the planet where you have to push and push and break through and do it yourself. We never told you that. You had to do it that way. You just assumed you did. Or someone else told you you did. No. The system sits and waits 
for you to show yourself. When you raise your hand to say, I'm interested, and the angels all gather around and the word is passed. They're interested. <laughs> and you're picked up and you're shown just a little more than you ask for to make you a little more interested. It's all with free will, dear ones, but it's biased in your favor. <laughs> Is this real? There will be those who perhaps will walk out of the room unconvinced. Well, I have something to tell you. I'm not here to convince. For those who awaken with the potential that this is real, who are changing their concepts to look into themselves or look into something that heretofore was spooky. You've raised your hand and you're the ones whose spirit will meet this very day and this very night and will walk out with you. And the ones who have scratched their heads and say, this is not for me, there is no judgment of any of that. We still surround you. But because you haven't asked or you don't want to or it doesn't suit your countenance this day, there is no action from us. That is because the free will of humanity is respected above all things. This is what makes the test work. The puzzle is solved by those who want to solve it, not by those who don't. <laughs> But the system is biased to those who want to solve the puzzle. And so it comes back on itself greater than the action you give it and what that means. So it's not a puzzle and it's not cryptic. It is that you give the energy of A and what happens on the planet is A, B, C, D, and E. All it takes is A. And the system gives you the rest. And the planet then is more impressed by what you've done than the action that you've done. Because we stand by to amplify it. Old souls are amplifiers. Is this real? Do you know each other? What is hiding in this room? You had a small exercise. There was maybe a little aha or two, but what is really hiding in this room? I could start listing it because I know without offending anyone. There's a mother in here who did not have surviving children. She tried. She has dreams of being on what you have called a stagecoach. Heading toward the west. In this very country. Did you know the pioneers did not ride in the stagecoaches? You knew that, didn't you? They walked beside them. The coaches were for the supplies. So every pioneer who went from east to west walked the whole distance. And you had children along the way. Many did not live. There's a mother in here who had children along the way and none of them lived. And the children are in the audience. <laughs> That's the profundity that hides here. Did you meet him? I don't know. You tell me. You see somebody and you know there's a connection and you have no idea what it might be. And your mind races 
to all sorts of possibilities, past lives, sisters, brothers, whatever. But this one was amazing. And they're here. And you may never know that, Mom. But that is the profundity of the potentials of the room. There are two women in this room who died in battle as men together in a foxhole many, many lives ago. Mates to the max. And in your akash, there is sorrow for the moment of your deaths. And you're both here as women. A past life reader would put that together. It may not matter to you, but right now I just want you to know it. That's the profundity in the room. Is this real? The most profound thing I can tell you this day is that we are family and that everything here you see is temporary. <laughs> Long before the atmosphere was even put upon this globe, you and I were working the puzzle in other places. That's how old you are. That's the real you. You always were. And you always will be. The peace of God that you are is the real part. The biology, the temporary part. Which means that every single relationship that I have described today, you will know about when you leave here. And that's part of the celebration. When you get to my side of the veil, which is home. And you look back and you go, what an adventure. I didn't even see you. I didn't even know you. It's good to be home. Can you take the energy of home and put it on you now? That's the test. Do you see this? If you can, then a little bit of home is coming from the other side to sit in your lap. To be put upon you so you can relax with all of it. So you can be home while you're here. Where you can take the majesty of who you really are and see it while you're here. Where you can apply that which you know is on the other side of the veil as the essence of God and practice it here. And others can see it in you. And when they do, they may ask I'm interested and they may raise their hands too and around them all of the angels will gather they're interested because you showed them something they did not know was possible is this real this is a message from home from a brother sister to you we're not gender oriented on the other side of the veil we have no corporeal essence on the other side of the veil we are part of the soup of the divine the great central source the creative energy of all things we sing your name in light did we tell you that God is finite that is to say all of the pieces they never change they're always the same pieces. They don't grow in number. They don't shrink in number. We miss you while you're gone. And all of us know who you are. And all of us know who you are. There is a support group waiting for you to raise your hand. It's up to you. How'd this feel? Is this real? <laughs> and so it is. <laughs>